My name is Bonnie Vasey. Um, I'm a professor here in the School of Criminal Justice. I've been here for 19 years at Rutgers University, Newark. Um, I'm also the uh, Vice Chancellor for Planning and Implementation, and I am the inaugural director of the P3 Collaboratory for Pedagogy, Professional Development, and Publicly Engaged Scholarship. My job as the Vice Chancellor for Planning and Implementation was really um, about rolling out the strategic plan. When Nancy Cantor, our chancellor, came here in January 2014, the first thing she did was put together a st strategic plan. It's not a strategic plan like really any other strategic plan I've ever seen. It's more of a value statement, and it's a call to arms. And in that strategic plan, there were some activities that we needed to be thoughtful about. And there were four action groups that we put together that were comprised of faculty, students, and staff to look at um, leveraging our diversity, about staffing for the new mission, about our role as an anchor institution, and then finally um, the new professoriate. And with the changing demographics of the United States, that also has implications for the changing demographics in, the, in higher education and in the faculty in higher education. Um, we know that new scholars now uh, tend to be interested in different types of research and scholarship than in the past. They engage more deeply with um, their communities of interest. And the landscape of higher education is also changing. And we also wanted to find stronger ways to support publicly engaged scholarships, high impact scholarship. Uh, my name is Alexander Sanella. I am a um, associate professor of accounting at Rutgers Business School. Uh, right now, I'm directing the MBA in professional accounting program, as well as the Masters of Accountancy in professional accounting, uh, and I'm the director of the Teaching Excellence Center at RBS. In my role uh, in the Teaching Excellence Center, uh, I've been working with um, uh, our faculty and as well as our administration to develop training for our faculty and the P there is the professional development side and when the P3 was created it was a natural uh, synergy and we began working together on some projects. What I needed to unlearn uh, is quite a bit. Uh, you know what, what AQ I think uh, has done for me is uh, really helped me improve my teaching skills. It's not that I was uh, doing so poorly in my in my teaching evaluations, but it it's just a way to get better. Um, you know, bringing bringing a B plus student to an A sort of uh, as a, as an instructor. Uh, things I've really learned that that helped me quite a bit was uh, uh, getting students more engaged. Um, always I was always um, the type to just ask a question and have a student raise their hand and you would always get the same people. Uh, what I've done here is used a very simple technique and that is to just get a, a deck of index cards and just call on students randomly and you'd always get the entire class that way and, and I've tried that uh, this semester for the first time and it's working working very well. And applying other AQ techniques uh, over the last year I found that my teaching ratings did improve. So it's, it's, it's a definite benefit for, uh, for me, and more importantly, it's a benefit for the other instructors on our campus. Uh, the idea is to take a technique from um, the module that's covered in a, any given week and try it out in your classroom. After trying it out, there's a conversation with the other faculty learners in the cohort um, just to share the experience, share what worked, what didn't work, and there's this great feedback loop with you know people building on others' experiences. Um, for me, uh, I'm a facilitator for um, the online cohort portion of, of AQ's program, but I'm also taking the course at the same time. And I have to say, I have been here, I've been teaching for 19 years, I taught when I was a graduate student. No one ever taught me how to teach. I don't think that's unusual. I think many faculty members are in the same boat. The, so the best part about this for me, even after 19 years of teaching and being, I guess, considered a master teacher, 
this has given me a completely new view of teaching. So, so something simple, like I used to um, start every class with housekeeping. Um, and students, you know, I figured students trickle in for the first five, ten minutes of the class. And so it's a way for me to sort of wait for people to arrive but get something done at the same time. Um, and then through the process of taking this course, um, I understood the research behind not wasting the first few minutes. Those are the, that's the time when students learn the most, right at the beginning of class. Why would you want to waste it on housekeeping? Um, and students themselves know if there's nothing happening in the first five, ten minutes of class, why should they be on time? So I just moved into using this technique of um, an engagement trigger. So we start with a photo or a video or a statement that's posted um, on, the, um, on the screen at the beginning of class. Um, students start right off, right from the very moment they arrive, and start um, thinking about the questions that are posted and then wh whether there's a reflection, a video reflection or a photograph reflection, that they, um, they're engaged. And obviously the engagement trigger ha is aligned specifically with the classroom um, learning goals for that day. Um, and it has been amazing. So my students are showing up on time. They're not wasting that time. And even better, it's having a ripple effect. So I meet with 10 of those same students outside of class for um, a mentoring activity. They're showing up on time for that too. So you know, it's been it's been profound in seeing the change, the impact that this can have on students. Um, and not only do they enjoy it more, but they really will deeply engage with this material, and it will be something that will have an impact on their lives as they move forward.